Hi, everybody. It is October 17, 2017. If you have not listened to this interview with Ilana Freeland, then click on the link below. I hope that you do listen to it. And especially at the 35 minute mark, she starts talking about the history of Santa Rosa, this area of California, the sacred sites, the old Catholic California. North is Santa Rosa, south is Santa Cruz. She goes into the history of it, so I'm not going to speak to that. But she does, she does say that these fires, she believes, are a satanic ritual, and then does go into the history of this area. And I'm going to play a few minutes of it, but she, in this video, states something about Santa Cruz and says, I hope, I hope I'm wrong about Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz wildfire prompts evacuations. Santa Cruz now. Wildfires. 200 acres burned, 5% contained, 150 residents to evacuate, uh, one structure destroyed, 150 to 200 homes threatened by this fire. Officials said evacuation orders are in place for the community of Deer Creek as well as Las Cumbres. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. So now we have wildfires in Santa Cruz. Um, listen to just a few minutes of this. What happened in Santa Rosa to me is a satanic operation, uh, and if it was, and it was utilizing the uh, the the geoengineering weather uh, warfare implements, uh, and and. I immediately thought of how I had portrayed Santa Rosa in uh, my Sub Rosa America books. And, and I, I wanted to, you know, if we could just for a moment turn back to the 1700s and, uh, and the conquest, uh, a very bloody conquest of the United States, uh, many Native Americans dying the Catholic priests coming in, first the Jesuits, then the Jesuits were, um, were barred and, and disallowed. And they were then replaced by the Franciscan monks. And among them was a monk uh, trained in Malta, which is a very esoteric training. So he was very well prepared to come and examine the land of California looking for the sacred sites that Native Americans had had known were sacred. And by sacred, I, I think I'm talking about ley lines, I'm talking about geomagnetism, talking about power points uh, on the Earth's uh, sort of acupuncture body. And um, usually, a uh, certainly the Romans were aware of that and would always put a, uh, would honor one of their gods at a previous holy site of the Celts or whoever. So this was going on in California as Father Junipero Serra made his way up the coast, founding uh, one mission after another. And what he wanted was a rosary of missions. So I'm going to read, just that just gives you an idea. Uh, I'm going to read this, and, and, and I would like to say at the outset that I believe this was a, a, a shaft, a uh, spear, into uh, the heart, of, in a way, of, uh, of the old Catholic Christian California, this event going on in Santa Rosa. Okay, so I'll read now from uh, Sub Rosa America, Volume 1. Between 1771 and 1782, Father Serra founded six more missions before dying in 1784. One mission for the Archangel of Birth and the others for 13th and 15th century Franciscans. After his death, Father Fermin Fer uh, Francisco de la Suen 
completed the rosary of 21 missions between 1786 and 1798. One for the Archangel of Christ's Countenance near Camp Roberts, another for the Archangel of Healing in San Rafael, two for 13th century kings and eight more, the Queen of the Missions, Santa Barbara, the Roman maiden beheaded by her father for becoming a Christian, Santa Ines, a 13-year-old Roman girl executed for refusing to sacrifice to Roman gods, the Immaculate Conception at Vandenberg Air Force Base, 60 miles northwest of Santa Barbara, Holy Cross at Santa Cruz, Our Lady of Solitude on Fort Romy Road in Soledad, St. Joseph of Guadalupe, St. John the Baptist, San Juan Bautista, and San Francisco Solano at the very top in Sonoma. 21 missions in Alta, California, 31 in Baja, California, 52 in all, a perfect Mayan calendar, round of years, connecting the two Californias. In Alta, California, Santa Rosa in the north, and Santa Cruz in the south make the rosy cross on the rosary, the Rosicrucian cross. Between Santa Rosa and Santa Cruz in San Francisco is Santa Dolores and her wonderful Saint Michael and the Dragon, established in 1776, the year the United States was founded. So this is a little of our history of, of California. Uh, and um, I, I feel that this Santa Rosa, I, I certainly hope I'm not saying that uh, if Santa Rosa has been hit, the next one to be hit will be Santa Cruz, the, which means the Saint Cross uh, in the south of the Rosy Cross, uh, the Rosicrucian Cross. I hope I'm not saying that, but it seems to me that uh, Santa Rosa uh, given that these elites, uh, many of whom are active Satanists, some of whom are simply caught in the in the uh, web of what they have entered with without knowledge, um, I, I I know that they they cling to esoterics. I'm I was uh, as soon as the event in Las Vegas happened, I was already uh, writing up what I saw immediately the numerology uh, in the accounts the names of some of the uh, players that were, were being put forward. Um, all of these things have meaning uh, because if there's one thing I know about uh, the esotericists and occultists who serve the dark side, they love to uh, show how smart they are and how clever they are and how much they know. And they love to flaunt it in front of the profane, that's us, profane means outside the temple, that would be the Masonic temple, by the way. Uh, they love to show us that they know so much and that we're gonna miss everything because we're gonna get caught up in sending blankets and money and thinking of the poor sufferers, which of course they never think about. Uh, so um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's how I saw it with Santa Rosa. I've been there many times. Uh, in my California days, because I used to live in uh, San Francisco, and um, and uh, you know, I it's also just a few uh, a few miles from where Bohemian Grove is is um, mm -hmm. is held every summer, every July, and I was wondering, I'd love to hear how Bohemian Grove fared, uh, if it too was burned or not. Okay, so I'm sorry for the telephone call that just came in. Um, I, I would love to hear how you guys are doing with all of what we are living today. It's, it's hard. I'd also love to hear how you are doing physically. And if any of you are experiencing frequencies, your symptoms kind of worse this week because mine have been. And I am having a very difficult time just thinking clearly, organizing my thoughts, concentrating. And this, this week has been very different for me. 
And I do know that a lot of it does have to do with the frequencies. I have been jolted awake so many times, not being able to fall back to sleep. My ear, my right ear, the, the sharp, high-pitched tones that I have been experiencing have left my right ear in so much pain, swollen and unable to hear out of my right ear. It's not something that is, you know, permanent. It's periodic. But I'm also feeling really, uh, I'm, I, this is hard. It would be hard to take, even if we were physically feeling fine, to watch the destruction of so many people's lives. And these sick, satanic psychopaths that all of us see very clearly, and then to be surrounded by so many Americans who are just so clueless and who clearly want to remain clueless because I guess they're happier that way. When I saw Santa Cruz, I just, I was like, okay. Having heard Ilana Freeland say it, amazing. Really, truly amazing. But um, I want you to take a look at this. This is the start of a Plain Truths video, but it's on Serbian Conspiracies channel. But how do the trees stay with the fire being so intense it melts the cars? How did the trees not get burned if this was a fire? Fire the trees did. But here, I mean, look at right there. There's trees still have, 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 have bushes on them and stuff, but that was burned down to the chimneys. Yeah. This thing, this thing, I mean, to melt metal is 3,000 degrees to melt cars. I mean, look at this car. The rim's all the way down. I mean, this was torched. That's what I'm saying. They, they've never seen anything like this before. Look at this. Yes. Okay. So, this is a wildfire. This is a forest fire. This is a deliberate targeting of buildings with absolutely nothing happening around them. The trees are fine. Absolutely fine. No evidence of fire on either side of both of these buildings. I think this is McDonald's, that was Arby's. This is the clearest footage of all of the, the footage that shows very clearly this was not a forest fire. Well, you know, we did have forest fires. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this did not come from the forest fire. Obvious. What's really frustrating is that you try to show this to Americans or you try to talk to them about this and they just refuse to acknowledge it. Directed energy weapons were used. This was deliberate. Deliberate. Look how clean, pristine, you know, is the, the grounds around this. But here, this gas station got it. Or it was Arby's or McDonald's or whatever. Um, so, more evidence is coming in that this absolutely was my God, a deliberate 
perhaps satanic ritual, but a deliberate destruction of a huge area of California. And now we have Santa Cruz. But I also want to show you um, just a few more articles that I came across. California fires directed energy weapons. This is Alana Freeland. Yes, this is the exactitude of destruction offered by artificial intelligence. Run directed energy weapons attacks dependent upon our ionized electrified atmosphere structures gone trees intact for the military mind it's impressive indeed all the nano aluminum particles in the buildings and soil after years of drought years of chemical trails overhead not to mention the plasma the plasma cloud cover laid three days in advance of this debacle this is the face of modern techni um, tactical warfare in service to disaster capitalism and globalist fat cats. Were kings better than CEOs and interlocking, interlocking corporate boards? At least the ma majority of kings loved their country and took pride in their people. And this is more drone footage of the fire damage in Santa Rosa. And yeah, you can even see right here, all of the trees are fine. Um, it is difficult to believe that our planet has been weaponized before our very eyes, but that is exactly what has happened. First, we were seduced by the convenience of a wireless world, then atmospheric weather experimentation in the guise of carbons, climate change converted the air we breathe into an antenna. Now the geoengineering we've been subjected to for two decades is being normalized as the Star Wars space fence rises around and within us. This can happen to any of us. But here, um, this was a a tweet or a comment, maybe a comment underneath the plain truth dot infos video. I live fifty three miles southeast of Santa Rosa in Almedia. Almedia, I'm not sure if I've pronounced that correctly. I was up late last night sitting on my back porch playing on YouTube, not a drop of wind. Then suddenly a huge gust of wind whipped through the yard, flung my heavy wooden gates wide open, despite them being latched shut. That blast of high wind lasted several hours. I saw bright blue flashes in the sky, too. Zero thunder, and never saw lightning bolts, so I just assumed that the lightning storm was happening really far away. I was wrong. An hour after the wind started, I smelled smoke. Definitely smelled like wildfire. It didn't have that choking nostril searing smell that burning plastic, carpet, mattresses, and paint give off in a straight structural fire. Now, um, I want to, and I will link below to everything. This is an article on the heritage.org site, and it goes through a lot of the viability directed energy weapons. Like here, paired with a microwave generator, an E-bomb, which is an explosively pumped flux compression generator, the EPF CG uses chemical explosives to compress an electrically charged coil. This destroys the device but produces electrical pulses in the terawatt range that are equivalent of 10 to 1,000 lightning strikes. So paired with a microwave generator, it could produce an ultra-short, intense microwave burst depending on factors such as burst height, 
microwave frequency, and the shielding around the target electronics, such an e-bomb could have an effective range of several hundred meters. I'm not going to read the whole article, but what I'm pointing out here is that there are so many different weapons that they have at their disposal to create these kinds of fires. And the millimeter wave, the microwave bursts, could do it. And I need to do a little bit more research on scalar, scalar waves and scalar weapons because I did get a comment from Sheena, who lives in this area, mentioning that these winds could have been um, produced by scalar waves. I think the intersecting waves could create those kinds of winds, but I do need to do further research on that. Um, a laser shot. A laser shot could have produced those blue flashes that people saw. And they do have um, lasers that can uh, be either continuous beams or short, intense pulses of light in every spectrum, from infrared to ultraviolet. And depending on the spectrum, will depend on the color of the light that you see flashing. The power output necessary for a weapons grade laser ranges from 10 kilowatts to one megawatt. When the laser beam strikes a target, the energy from the photons in the beam heats the target to the point of combustion, combustion or melting, to the point of combustion or melting. So we've seen melted, uh, melted cars. Um, you know, combustion, that is what we have seen. These fires just breaking out. It's the act or process of burning chemical uh, reactions between substances. So the frequencies coming out of these lasers hitting oxygen and electrons or protons could have caused these fires. You know, the head of Cal Fire, which is the, the head of the entire state in California, he said he had no idea what started the fires. 60 strikes out of nowhere in the middle of the night accompanied by these sudden, inexplicable winds. He has no idea what caused it. I think that we know. You know, whether it was laser, whether it was microwave burst, whether it was millimeter waves, I don't really particularly care All I know is this was deliberate. All I know is that we are absolutely at war. All I know is that millions of Americans are casualties already. We've just seen in one week's time thousands of homes burned, ashes left. That's it. And we know that they were destroyed from the fires, but also directed energy weapons. We still have so many people in Houston still suffering the consequences. And Florida and Puerto Rico. And I never want to leave anything out because, of, uh, sure enough, I'll get a comment from somebody from Florida who will be angry, or Puerto Rico who will be angry. What I am just saying is that we are seeing widespread, widespread destruction now. And it is coming at us. 
fast and furiously. I went on Drudge yesterday. Nowhere, nowhere on Drudge did they have anything about the fires. Completely gone. Nothing. You guys who have TVs, are you seeing any of the reporting on these fires? After the flooding in Houston and talking to my friend in Houston, what, what was she telling me? Even local news was not reporting on what was taking place. In Houston, very little information coming out about the floods. So very little information coming out about these fires. And I think because the evidence is so clear, it is right in our face that this was not, these were not ordinary fires. I do think that they want to play it down. They don't want people checking into it. But this is the, um, the, uh, a map of all of the fires in California. And they also have shelter information. If you just click on the houses, it will tell you where all of the shelters are. And look at how many shelters there are. Crisis shelter, um, Red Cross shelter. loads of Red Cross shelters and animal shelter. Um, but the fires, okay, Oakmont fire. This is 27% contained. This is in Sonoma County. How can it be that Drudge has wiped all of these fires off of Drudge when these fires continue? And Oakmont it is a residential area, 27% contained. How many more homes have been destroyed? For days, mainstream media was reporting 5,700 homes. That's it. That number stayed constant for days. And these fires were raging on, taking out neighborhoods. That number is much bigger. The number of deaths, much higher. So Oakmont, if any of you know what's happening in Oakmont, please leave a comment below. There is so much information about directed energy weapons and how our military has been using them for a very, very long time. Can I ask you a question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness. Um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. A lie. They used directed energy weapons in Iraq. And this, Rumsfeld, this is from 2003. Do you want to do anything you add? I don't think I would add much. I, I, I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not. Do you think they are in early stages? General Richard Myers? Really? Uh, you don't know what stage they are at? I think they're in uh, early stages. And watch his body language. He's obviously very nervous in answering this question. Ready uh, for employment at this point. In, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectation that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time and you reach in there and take something out that is still in the developmental stage and you might use it. So the, I, it's not, your question is not answerable. 
it is, it, is uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you know you're going to experiment. So. I, I think that's the point, and I think that it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight, even before they've been fully <laughs> wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered microwave. Uh, but yeah. Sure. yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's over now. So, but scratch my neck. Yeah, do that one more time for us. Let's see that one more time. For sure. And yes. we will continue to do. <laughs> These psychopaths, these sick, lying bastards. All right. Um, I will link below to um, to this video. What caused these fires in California? There are so many people on this. There are so many people posting videos on the use of directed energy weapons to get these fires started, to destroy these homes, and I'm glad they're speaking out. But this was uh, this was an interesting video, so I will link be below to Jerry Tony's um, video and what he has to say about how clear that it was not a forest fire. Because none of these trees, none of these trees are burned, but the homes are destroyed. And I thought it was interesting that they are keeping people out of their neighborhoods. We can't, we can't be in this area, okay? I'm leaving right now. I was in Santa Rosa with the San Francisco Police Department. I was Sergeant Russell, who was on looter patrol. However, the issues you come across more than looters are the people who make their way into the restricted area for various reasons. Where, where are you guys trying to go? Right there. Right there. Our house is right at that fence right there. They won't give us we any just more money. Want to take How about I go take a picture for you guys? Because we, we can't let anybody in. Officers drive all around the closed areas to keep non-essential personnel out for several reasons. There are still lots of down power lines, and basically, it's just not safe. It's interesting to see life going as normal, like here on Wilkip Road, where mail is still being delivered, even in the burned out areas. I know you probably need to get over here and watch it over here, but we can't let anybody in. As much as the police would like to permit residents into restricted areas, their orders are to keep the area clear until it's safe. I'm going to have to ask you guys to get out of this area for a little bit. Okay, nobody's supposed to be back here. This couple wanted to open a safe so she could see if her wedding ring survived the fire. The couple apparently walked through all this debris to get to what was left of their home. I trying to find my wedding band, which is supposed to be in there. So Sergeant Russell made an executive decision. We're gonna have people in this area patrol and we'll make sure no one messes with this safe, okay? But I'm, I'm gonna have to escort you guys out, okay? okay? There was You know, it's really hard to watch. Um, how many people are suffering the consequences? You know, when you see an elderly couple like that, their home is gone, she just wants her wedding ring. But, you know, <laughs> it's dangerous so people can't get back to their neighborhoods. They're keeping people out of their neighborhoods. But look at this, you know, right here, smack in your face. The fire doesn't touch this foliage, but destroys this home. I would love to know how you guys are doing. How are you, how are you doing with all of this? Surrounded by Americans who just will not ever wake up to the fact that we are at war and that fires and and hurricanes and tornadoes and that all of this is being used 
as weapons against us. When you see so many of your fellow Americans really suffering the consequences now. And then, and then I come across comments underneath my videos and the read of them, it's clear that they just don't care. And it makes me sick to my stomach. The lack of care, um, people just go on. Those who are still comfortable, yeah, they might go, oh, what a shame. And then that's it. When you think about the numbers of people now, just in this six week period, Houston, uh, Florida, Puerto Rico, now California. As I speak, as I speak, over a million people are suffering the consequences. And so many will not be able to recover. And I've learned already that I have subscribers who the friends, family have turned their back when just a, just a little bit of help could take away so much stress and so much of their nightmare. But no, we have these comfortable Americans who just don't give a shit about anybody but themselves. And then Fortunately, I come across the comments like from Sheena who lives out there and others who are doing everything that they can. Sheena having lost, having her sister lost her home, the Oroville floods. Now she has five friends who have lost their homes in these fires. And she doing everything she can to help out. And I just hope to God that everybody out there is really banding together. But when you think about the numbers of people, I can, I could probably say that, well, this is probably a high percentage, but I'd say 50% have a, another place to go. 50% have family members that will take them in. And maybe 50% can rebuild. But I would say the other 50%, what do they do? Now I'm guessing on the figures. But we all know that our economy has been pretty well destroyed for so many people. And people are really hurting now financially. So when you have something like this happen, my God, you had better have some normal family, good, good souls in your family that will reach out and help you. Because if you don't, it could very well be the end of you. And that is what really makes me sick when I read comments from people who think that Californians des de deserve this or reading comments from subscribers who clearly, you know, they're making these sarcastic remarks or jokes and yeah. Yeah, I bet those in California are really laughing right now. Those who, you know, are rummaging through the ashes of what was their home. I'm sure they're laughing too. Anyway, I'm sorry for going on. I once again feel like I'm getting sick, so I am I am down, but I know that physically I'm I'm really um struggling. So that is in part why I'm feeling so horrible. But how do you not feel horrible? when all of this is going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So many, right? Put your faith in Jesus. Then you won't feel bad. <laughs> well, 
I'm going to end with this. Whether you have faith in Jesus or not, whether you have any kind of faith, I think we need to really be seriously considering everything that we can do to change ourselves to help one another to go out of our way to help those in need because well Christians know this right doesn't it say in the Bible hearts will grow cold family members will turn against one another all right well if we are living this prophecy then it is up to all of us to ensure that our hearts don't grow cold and that we really now change our own way, our own ways of living so that we can reach out and help those in need. All links are below.